I've been working with the idea of refugia. Refugia is a uh, term from ecology. There are certain spots on Earth that are especially resilient to disruption. Where, so one example is the Pacific Northwest. There's a, a band uh, along the coast where that's perfect for redwood, redwoods. Redwoods, um, when climat climatic conditions are right, <clears throat> they spread over you know, much of the North American continent. They're not just some tiny niche species. But when conditions are not right, they retreat to where it's perfect for them. And they wait there until things change and they can radiate forth from that sanctuary of health. Uh, another example is the very, very deep Amazon, uh, where, where you know, it's this hot spot of biodiversity. And if, if it can, if as long as it remains intact, then tremendous destruction, you know, glaciation, ice ages, you know, like all kinds of stuff can happen. And that biodiversity will radiate out again. Uh, so there are a few places on earth like this that are refuges, refugia, you, we can call them, either for certain individual species, you know, it's their home base, kind of, or even for entire ecosystems. And, and when the flood comes, when the drought comes, when the, uh, you know, volcanic eruption, the, the like, whatever, uh, or, you know, human beings with their industrial destruction come, as long as there are these refugia, then there is always hope for the future. There's always hope to repopulate the earth with that species, to repopulate the earth with life. So I've been <coughs> extending this concept to, the, to an idea of cultural refugia. Back in uh, the early 2000s, this is the kind of the origin story of, of the work that I've done ever since. I uh, was, you know, I had been quite steeped in radical critiques of civilization. Um, more and more radical, you know, starting uh, in the 1980s, early 90s with, uh, you, you know, Noam Chomsky or, or Wendell Berry, people like that, uh, and, and just getting more and more radical until I was reading Daniel Quinn and John Zerz and um, Derek Jensen. And, and, uh, but feeling like there was uh, something missing from all of these. Like they weren't getting to the root of it. They kind of went a certain level down and stopped at human beings are just awful. <laughs> and I couldn't put my objection to that into words at the time. Because in fact, <clears throat> part of me like understood where they were coming from. Um, like that storyline gives expression to, I feel awful. It gives expression to the wounds of shame and self-blame and hum humiliation that are quite common in the way that modern society raises children and the way that modern society operates. I wasn't so clear on that at the time, 
But there was part of me that resonated with, yeah, human beings are just awful. But not all of me resonated with it. And I felt the presence of an objection. This cannot be, that's not a very deep answer. And it's an invitation into war, war against ourselves. And isn't that the same mentality as the war on nature? Like there's, there's this critique is itself part of the problem. There's another level, there's a deeper level here. And it all came together when I was walking in uh, our neighborhood that Patsy and I moved to after we left Taiwan, and we lived on Matthew Circle. And it was Matthew Circle, you know, it was a cul-de-sac in a suburban neighborhood. And uh, we had moved there with such high hopes. And, and part of my high hopes were, were that, you know, there's, lots of young families in this neighborhood. There's going to be kids outside playing. There's going to be, you know, pickup games of baseball, like in Peanuts, you know, Snoopy, Charlie Brown. There's going to be kids out there, you know, like, like the little rascals, you know, like Dennis the Menace. Like, it's going to be, it's, there's going to be community. We're going to get to know our neighbors. We're going to do stuff together. We're going to plant community gardens. And instead, you know, there, were, there weren't a lot of kids outside. It wasn't that high a priority for the parents. The kids were busy or the parents were afraid. One neighbor wouldn't let their kids outside of their yard. I had not yet come across the concept of a roaming radius. The roaming radius is the average distance that children go unsupervised from their homes. And uh, it used to be several miles, you know, and now it's like, you know, 100 meters or something. The importance of a large roaming radius, that holding that as valuable and developing the skills and the perceptions and the, the self-confidence and the beingness that comes along with growing up in that way, that is part of the cultural refugia that I'm talking about. Somewhere, people need to have that experience in order for it to repopulate the earth, for, for the, the human beingness that can only come from that upbringing to still exist. It has to still exist somewhere where we will be lost. We need that tether back to the mothership. <clears throat> 